for anybody. Oh, big stretch. Shock, you're tuning in for some nutritional advice, mate. You're going to need it, big man. Jordan, how are you, pal? So for anyone who saw my... Uh... Hang on one second, just going to get power. Yeah, so for anybody who saw uh, what I put out on Instagram yesterday and today, right, nutritional advice for... You all right, Paula? Hi, how are you? I'm well, you okay? I'm fine. I'm just explaining to people what we're going to be doing. So, okay. um, correct me if I'm wrong. So you said football nutrition, obviously during uh, COVID-19, while players are at home training and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, obviously limited training time to what we're used to doing. Um, and it's, I suppose it's, it's good for, for everybody, not just footballers, but for everyone who wants to stay healthy. Um, I've spoken to a lot of players during this time and, you know, mental health is probably a big thing at the moment because we're so used to being having a structured life. You know what it's like at the football club. And uh, we're obviously confined to, to our homes at the moment other than half an hour to an hour's worth of training, which is all I can normally do. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's fine. Um, so what I'll do, I'll let you obviously go ahead and speak. And then I've got a few questions uh, that people have, have sent through to me. Um, and obviously, if anyone, you know, says anything to me as well here, then I'll, uh, I'll write it down. But I said to people, it's quite good. Um, Paul is really experienced. Uh, anyone who's, you know, a supporter of Hibs or knows Scottish football, she helps some massive players. Helped me myself as well when I was at Hibs and I wasn't playing. My body fat went through the roof. Um, so, you know, she was a huge help. My, my thing flashed on. No, I was even saying um, you've been a huge help for me and other players as well. Um, so, as I said, boys, just, uh, boys and girls, just listen uh, to what she has to say. So, yeah, I'll let you go, Paula. Well, great. Thanks for having me. Uh, I haven't been out in the streets, so I haven't been speaking English for five or six days. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think during this time, the most important thing is to speak a little bit about immunity, which is kind of really important because I have seen a lot of people talking about how to boost your immune system and all of that. And that's not really responsible because you cannot boost your immune system. Uh, you can maintain a good, you know, immune system, but you cannot boost it. So there, are, there is a lot of misinformation, which is kind of normal in the nutrition world. But this is a, like, you know, it's delicate times. It's, you cannot be giving, like, you know, advice that is not, like, really going to the point that... Um, that you want so I would say that's the first thing to get clear that you cannot boost immunity but you can maintain your immunity or make your immune system a little bit stronger by eating healthy right yeah. so I would say that I have given some recommendations to the players and the first thing will be to include fruit and vegetables in their diet uh, why? Because they have mostly all the nutrients that will help to maintain a good immune uh, system. So that's really important. And in this scenario, I want to, like, it's really important to say that, for example, like frozen fruit and vegetables, they have all the same, you know, nutrition quality than fresh products. So, you know you're not able to get like fresh products because all you know because of all of this situation and supermarkets being limited in what they have to offer so you can use frozen products and they're totally fine. Oh and, so the stuff you can get from from Costco and, and stuff on Tesco's and put in the freezer is that Yeah, the same? yeah because okay. yeah because actually the yeah, frozen fruits and vegetables they have all the nutritional quality that fresh products have they have yeah. been they froze those foods when they're in the best moment. Okay. So sometimes they're even better than the fresh uh, products. So that's, yeah. that's one thing. Uh, I would say that, you know, well, I, it's really optimistic to say that you have to include between fruit and vegetables five for, to seven portions per day. Some people don't even get one or two. But, yeah. You know, at least try to include them uh, a little bit more. Um, other thing that is important is, you know, keeping yourself hydrated because if you're not well hydrated uh, you kind of lose kind of the first line of immunity that is in your saliva you stop producing you know some substances that fight with the bacteria when they come oh so that's very good <laughs> um, i have mine here 
so yeah, so <clears throat> keep uh, yourself hydrated. It's really important for immunity as well. Uh, I would say, so this is not the best moment to go on a crash diet. Like it's yeah. not the best moment to get like some people might say, oh, I'm going on this strict diet because I'm not doing, you know, the same uh, type of exercise that I was. But when you go really low in calories and you um, eat, le I mean, when you have like a low energy availability, uh, your immunity gets compromised. So it's yeah. not the best. It's not like you're you want you're going to be eating more, but you don't want to do like you know low calorie or extreme diets uh, during this time. Um, and another thing is try to have like protein throughout the day. Yeah, because protein is really important in the production of immune cells or immune yeah. things. Uh, so having protein during, throughout the day is really important. And also, that's important to kind of, you know, try to keep the same muscle mass. So yeah. it, it will go both ways. Um, so I think, you know, in general terms, that's it. Of course, if I go to like individual nutrients, I would say vitamin C. So there are many foods that are rich in vitamin C. We can speak about that a little bit later. Yeah. Vitamin D is really important and we're not going outside that much. So we're not getting the sunshine. So um, in some cases, supplements might be of help. Yeah. In this case with vitamin D. Um, also probiotics that refers to like the bacteria that you have in your gut, like the good bacteria, that's really important for the immunity. So, you know, have like yogurt and some cheeses. They have some probiotics, so that's kind of good. Um, I think, yeah, that's it. That was, uh, that's it in terms of like on individual nutrients. Yeah. Okay, so like you said, like, they're really important for, for people to make sure you can't boost your immunity, but you can help maintain at the same level because I've, I've obviously been told or been reading up stuff and you always say to me don't go on google because it's you know people just putting their opinions um you know and loads of people are saying oh they managed to boost their immunity and this that and the other and vitamin d tablets i've been taking ever since you've recommended them to me as well so um obviously it's important like you said we're not getting outside and stuff um so people start you know that's probably one of the main ones to take that vitamin d it would main help so no that's good yeah another thing that you know, in terms of immunity, it's really important to sleep well. And these are difficult times. Uh, people are stressed and, you know, it's hard. Or just, you know, people are watching Netflix and just keep, you know, yeah, watching, yeah. watching. And people are not sleeping enough. And sleep is really important to, to maintain immunity. Immunity, I would say, is more important than diet. Yeah. So also try to, you know, direct the um, nutritional recommendations to have like better sleep quality will be yes. a good way to promote like immune health. So yeah. that's another part. So like all the recommendations that I usually do uh, or I, I usually make or give players to improve sleep quality will be like of importance now. Yeah, oh, okay. No, that's the, that's the thing. I was going to ask you about that later. Obviously, mm -hmm. people, um, some players have been in contact and saying they're finding it hard to sleep because we're not getting anywhere near the same amount of exercise as what we used to. So then you go into bed later, you're sleeping later, but then they're also waking up earlier. So where we're used to getting maybe eight or nine hours of, of sleep, you know, we're now getting five or six hours of interrupted sleep as well. And it's just obviously a constant knock-on effect. So in terms of what foods are good for us to eat at night but won't really store fat? Is there yeah, any? Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's another thing. Like, some players will be like more prone to lose mus muscle mass, and some players will be more prone to gain fat mass. Then that's something that, of course, you don't want that. Um, so, as we have spoken before, like, we have kind of have to eat to fuel the work required. That's how, you know, how we say it, like fuel for the work required and um, carbohydrates. So carbohydrate foods, I would say like pasta, rice, potatoes, bread, and uh, all of that. They, those foods are high in carbohydrates. So it's not that you need to avoid them, but you're still training 
you know, at yeah. some point in the day. So I will have like carbohydrate food sources before and after training. And then yeah. perhaps I'll just go to, you know, low carb meals during the rest of the day. And yeah. try, you know, try to have like protein at every meal because when you have enough protein that will make you feel more full. Yeah. So that will help as well. So, for example, like what time are you training now? How is your... Um, so, um, for me personally, I try and do my run first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so, I probably... I'll try and run before before 11. The mm -hmm. um, first part of my training. And then I've also been doing um, some like hit sessions on YouTube. Um, and also like some core stuff. So, I've tried to vary my training, obviously, because I need to try and do something different. Um, but I've been doing, so I did a 5k yesterday morning, I've done a 10k uh, this morning, but then even when I get, so I'll probably like, I'll probably get tired about 5 or 6, mm -hmm. and then when I don't sleep, then it'll be harder to sleep at night time, so it's, um, it's, it's just knowing what to eat really, and obviously when I stay up, I get, I get hungry towards night time, but what I don't want to do is eat foods that are going to store the fat, and then, you know, when I go back to football, I'm, I'm five kg overweight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. So let's say, like, I would like to approach food as how energy dense it is. So, yeah. just, like, in kind of, of a way. So I would say, like, very low uh, calorie dense foods will be like soups, vegetables, fruits, um, and then, like, I don't know, also like dairy protein sources, right? Yeah. So will be like very low or low um, energy dense foods. Okay. Then we'll go to medium ones. So that will be like bread, um, pasta, um, I don't know, beef, other sources. And then very, very high will be like chocolate, and butter, um, butter, like really, really, really high uh, calorie foods. So um, it's kind of having a balance. I remember, I don't know if you remember, I was used to speak about like you know like a plate so yeah, yeah like the performance plate yeah, so if you have like a plate yeah the circular one uh, let's say if you're training hard or if you're training like really intense you would like to see that plate half of that one will be with carbohydrates and then the other half will be one quarter vegetables and one quarter protein that will be yeah. kind of like when you're training really hard when you're training at the training ground right yeah yeah but in this you know in this um time that we're uh, living right now and you know you guys are not training as much i know you guys are training but it will never it's be not the, the same. same can't replicate it yeah um i would say try to have like moderate carbohydrates during the day and try to have those foods around training so in your case uh you can go for like you can have like a high carbohydrate breakfast because you're going for a run and then you can have moderate carbohydrate lunch as you're training a little bit you know you're doing a yeah. session in the afternoon but then at night you should try to do like a low carb meal and yeah. having like a snack try to make it like a protein you know rich one so that will be like the main like um i don't know in terms of foods um it depends i think in this time it will be like really useful not for kids, because I don't recommend supplements for kids, but yeah. uh, for older adults to have like a protein supplement, like whey protein. Yeah. And we can actually recommend to have it like twice per day, like okay. um, kind of three or four hours from um, later than your last meal. Yeah. And that will kind of preserve, preserve your muscle mass and also make you feel full so you don't add you no know, because sometimes people eat because they're bored or because they're anxious there are yeah. many things happening right now yeah of course yeah it's yeah hard. Uh, yeah uh, uh, but that's really important as well i don't know cooking skills are really important yeah um i know not everyone knows how to cook <laughs> like boiler <laughs> i would say like also like planning your meals so from whatever you find in the supermarket I don't know how many times per week are you going, but whatever you find in the supermarket, then just kind of plan your meals. Yeah. So you know what you're making and that will give you a bit of a structure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like cooking is great, but I have found cases of, you know, people like we are sharing recipes and this amazing uh, 
desserts and whatever. And so people like, you know, I can make a, a banana bread today. Yeah. And it's really nice, but like having one piece. But yeah, instead yeah. if I make it and I have it there and I'm all bored all day and I'm eating it's one piece and yeah. every time I go to the kitchen, then it's not a very good idea. So it's kind of fine and like a balance. So what's the ideal breakfast, would you say, if, if a player's going for, for a run, like how long before the run should we eat? And what would you say is probably the ideal breakfast for us to have? Well, if you're going for a run, it depends. Like what to eat will be depending on how long are you going to be, you know, waiting from the last meal until you actually go for the run. So yeah. you, let's say it's in one hour, yeah. perhaps some porridge and some yeah. food, that will be enough. Yeah. Uh, but then if you're having breakfast and you're going for a run like two hours after that, you can include some protein in there. Yeah. You can have like, a, you know, some toast and eggs and something like that. But try to make it like more carbohydrate based if you're if you're going like within one hour after you, you eat. Okay. And then post run, how quickly after the run is it? Well, you know, like. There, there is a lot of confusion with that like window of opportunity after training you have yeah. enough time you have enough time to, to eat like you don't need to to rush to eat like in the next, in the first 15 minutes you have yes. like for example like for protein and muscle you have like 45 minutes one hour so i will say try to eat like within the first hour after the session and yeah. try to include carbs and and uh, protein. So, let's say if you're if you arrive from your run and you're not going to have to be having lunch, uh, then try to include like a snack. Yeah. So you can like make a smoothie, right? Yeah. So you can have a smoothie with protein, uh, with a protein supplement, and then you can add perhaps some fruit, like for example, like berries. They're very good for immunity as well. So that will be like an amazing, um, like a smoothie after training and then you have your lunch or your dinner afterwards okay so in terms of obviously some players have been asking how many runs should they be aiming to do a week how how many runs should they be aiming to do in a week well i don't know that's like the, i guess that depends on 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 how you're training i yeah. i don't know some some of you guys can can easily go for a daily 5k but yeah like making it longer and i guess you will like space them like if you're if you're going for 10k or more you shouldn't be doing that every day because you're not used to that yeah yeah of course. you don't want to get you know like a run related injury well you know while, while this time happens so I, yeah. I would say it's enough to do 5 to 8k and then have your high intensity interval sessions because those are really important you want yeah. to maintain that so it's not just about doing long distances, we should be doing... No, I mean, you you can kind of, of course, you need the run, but yeah. you will lose your fitness really quickly if you don't have, like, high-intensity interval sessions. So okay. I would say, like, in terms of training, that's the most important part, like, how intense, like, some minutes per, per week. I guess, like, m well, not yeah. not all, but many of the players are receiving, like, a... Like a I don't know, like a plan from their teams, from their sports science. Yeah, yeah. So they they know better <laughs> than I do, especially because they know at what intensities you guys train all the time. So yeah, yeah. They tell you, course. look, try to do twenty five minutes per day at a high heart rate because that's yeah. what you're used to. So they will give like more input on that. Okay. Someone was asking, um, how do you feel about intermittent fasting? So I guess that is that the one where you don't eat your first <laughs> meal until quite late. Yeah, intermittent fasting is like really popular now. Um, I would say for weight loss and perhaps for some diseases like diabetes, there are there is some research about how effective that is. Um, I'm not so sure for for you know for professional uh, yeah. football players, especially because. Well, how, how it's proposed is that you start eating at 12 and then you eat 12 for one and then you eat for eight hours and then, you know, it's like 16 hours of fast and eight hours of, uh, of, eating. of eating. Yeah. So um, it's important to, you know, make clear that it's not like you can 
eat whatever you want in those eight hours. You still need to kind of eat, you know, good quality food and don't go. Because at the end of the day, if you eat more calories than those eight hours, yeah, you gain fat, you know, it doesn't Yeah, matter. yeah. Um, but in this scenario that we're living now, I wouldn't say that it's that bad because yeah. you're not training first thing in the morning. So yeah. if you're like waking up later yeah. that you're used to, and then you're not like a breakfast person and you're not going to be training in the morning, you're yeah. going to train in the afternoon. Then if you kind of want, want to you know, keep the calories down and not overeat, yeah. you can do it. But in a normal scenario of going to train to the training um, uh, round every day, I would recommend it because you know you compromise your fueling for the session and then you compromise your recovery from the session. So for for professional athletes, it's not no. the way to go. Especially, I mean, in, especially for footballers. All yeah. sports, it could be. Yeah. But for footballers. Okay. Um, what foods? Oh, I'll ask you that. What about what foods? So someone who plays under 12s football, so I imagine he's 11 years of age, mm -hmm. he's asking, how long should he be out running for um, if he wants to stay fit? No. <laughs> no, I, well, kids don't go that, I mean, they shouldn't be running more than 25 minutes. So 5K, yeah. 5K is more than enough. Like half an hour tops. I can't even run 5K in 25 minutes. Oh, you are, how long did, did it take you for your 10K today? Uh, it took me 54 minutes. That's which pretty I, good. No, it's not, because then some of the younger boys started putting their times in. Like, I think they must have been on their bikes. <laughs> the boys were going really fast. So I was like, wow. Who was the fastest? Uh, I think somebody did it in 39. Uh, Nicky Devlin. That's, that's really fast. Yeah, yeah. 39 minutes he, he did it. And so I'm not, I'm not too sure about the app he's using. I'll have to check it out. Because I use the Under Armour app, and he uses the Nike one. So oh, no, Nike's always wrong. Oh, really? Yeah, it's always oh. less. So yeah, I was always thinking. Strava. Right, so so what's the best one to use then? I use Strava. Yeah. So, oh, okay. But that's in your phone, so I don't know. Yeah. I was using uh, the Under Armour app, and some some of the times are questionable, let's say that. Yeah, I, I'll go with Strava. It's yeah, nice. okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change what I'm, what I'm using. Somebody said, what's the ideal body fat for a, a professional player to have? Yeah, okay. So, I'll tell you. So, body fat percentage is really, I mean, the way we calculate that is um, with equation, right? So, yeah. I, I use one, but then my colleague can use another one, and another oh. person can use another one. So, the values that come uh, from body fat percentage will always change depending on that equation. However, it's kind of okay to measure it because we can keep track. Okay. But I would say from eight to twelve. Yeah. That's you know a good a good place to be. But okay. lately we are not using uh, body fat percentage anymore. Yeah. When we measure the skin folds. Yeah. We add them all together, and then for example, like I add eight of those skin folds together, and then. We have like ranges. Yeah. So I would say for a footballer to be between 50 and 65 will be a good place to be. In the skin folds. Um, from like from the eight. But yeah. some people just add seven or some they add six, depending on what a nutritionist uh, or the sports, the sports scientist is, is using. So, um, that means, so you're on about the points, the eight different points you take. It from. Yeah, so I take yeah. eight. Yeah. So I add them all together, and I will tell you this is a no. And some clubs they have like a like a threshold. So I want yeah. my players to be below yeah. whatever threshold. Yeah. And then we, you know, we kind of keep track of that. Some some of my colleagues are very strict. I'm a, yeah. I'm a little bit soft. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But body fat doesn't necessarily mean you're fit, does it? Because some players can have high body fat, but then can still perform on the pitch. So it's not a, a definite science that, oh, if your body fat's high, then you're not able to perform, is it? I don't think it tells the whole story. It's yeah. just, you know, it's only one thing more. Of course, if you have less body fat, you'll be better at running. 
Yeah. Right? So that will be good. Uh, but also, I don't like, um, I don't like, like, values because yeah. it depends on, you know, on how one person is, genetics, how they store fat in their body, many, many, many factors. So yeah. I kind of have, like, a range, and, I, of course, I would know when it's too high, uh, but I wouldn't go that strict at as some like oh you need to be below 50 some yeah. people cannot be below 50 there is no way they will be below 50 yeah uh, but perhaps most of you can be below 70 so okay so better below 70 better one to go with but you guys love this the body fat percentage so i yeah. would say 8 to 12 Make, makes <laughs> us feel makes us feel good <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one i i i know i have I remember when you were at the club, I was yes. this equation that uses all, the equation uses all the all the eight parts, the yeah. eight measures. So it usually gives like a really low value. Yeah. Right? So then I was researching during the off season and I changed the, the equation and it's giving me like three or four percent more. So everyone freak out. So, so basically you're saying that my body fat... <laughs> wasn't the true wasn't the true well thing. i just changed it so now <laughs> everyone hates it thank god i left <laughs> <laughs> somebody's asking how much water um should somebody be drinking during a normal training day so if a professional player is having a normal training day and how much should they be drinking now obviously training slightly so you know it's like very common to say i don't know eight glasses per day and that's something that people always talk about but I think the, the easiest way is to track the color of the urine. So it's like not the, the first time you go to the toilet in the morning, but then during the day, if the color is like light yellow, that yeah. means you're hydrated. So that's easy because some people can't, don't ever drink eight glasses. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, it would be 1.5 liters to 2 liters per day, I would say. Uh, so, so when we're training, one and a half to two liters a day, you think will be fine, yeah. will be efficient. Mm -hmm. But you see, when people take supplements, that can change the color of your urine as well, can't it? Yeah, that's the other part. When you're taking like, B, uh, like supplements that have uh, vitamin B, all yeah. those like B twelve, B six, whatever, all of those, it might change the color of the urine. Uh, so yeah, that's true. But in in your regular. Uh, Training set. Well, most of the clubs they measure hydration in in the morning. Yeah. Um, and if not, you kind of need to rely on the on the color of your urine, or also try to have. So let's say, let's talk about a seventy five kilo player, right? Yeah. So if I take that, it will be, yeah, around three hundred three hundred milliliters before the session. Yeah. So you're well hydrated at least two hours before starting, between yeah. 300 and 500. And then try to have at least one liter during the day. Porches were just saying, Ryan was just saying he had a whole a box of chocolate brownies today. But it was his birthday, I think, yesterday. So happy birthday, Porto. Happy belated birthday. You can eat what you want, mate. He knows, <laughs> he knows what he needs to be doing. <laughs> So I was reading Tyson Fury's book, and he was saying he was doing eight liters of water um, a day, and that's why I got one of these because this is eight one point. Liters. Yeah, this is one point seven nine. See, so, uh, I, I, well, it's a lot. Um, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah, and also <laughs> when you drink, when you over drink water, like when you drink a lot, so you have uh, sodium in your blood, right? Yeah. So. When you drink a lot, you kind of dilute that sodium in your yeah. blood, and that's really dangerous. Okay. Like, it's a very dangerous condition to be at. So, yeah. for example, like not not in your case, not in in foot, in you know, in your sport, but in endurance sports. Yeah. We recommend you know being hydrated, but it's really more dangerous to overhydrate. Overhydrate. So, for example, I don't know if you have heard like people have died. In the marathon or after the marathon, yeah, 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 yeah. Usually, it's people who run like really, really slow. Yeah. So, perhaps they have they have been having a lot of water, like a lot. Yeah. 
sodium goes down and you know a person could die so you, you cannot go- die because of dehydration but you can die of overhydration so yeah. it's not like you know going and having i don't know yeah too many too much it's not good yeah either. it's not good for you um I'm trying to see if I've, I've missed anyone's questions um well we spoke about there was a young boy um 14 and He's talking about what his diet should be because he wants to be a professional footballer. But I think we both agree that 14 year olds shouldn't really be dieting, should they? Well, not a diet, but I would say if they start like eating, adding more fruit and vegetables in their usual diet and try to be open to try new new foods. Um, there is not like a special diet for, for kids, nor yeah. for adults either. It, it will depend, but I would say try to have like a balanced one and try to include fruit and vegetables and um you know in terms of oh i was going to speak a little bit about this because we have been hearing a lot of bad stuff about processed foods like yeah, yeah. processed foods kill you um blah, blah blah and it's true when you read you know the literature and you know what they're referring to but yeah. for the general public i think it's really it's kind of complicated because for example like teen beans they're yeah. great yeah it's great and they're like really processed yeah yeah, so yeah it depends on what kind of foods you're you're having right okay i have seen that during these times people are relying a lot of on processed foods when i see you know what people is are buying in the in the supermarket yeah it's like i don't know uh, tortillas crisps uh, all of that and yeah it's not the best to to have now i guess trying to try to find a balance between yeah. processed foods Processing. and, and normal Fresh foods yeah um someone was asking what how long before a game so mm-hmm. I, i imagine before a warm up should players be eating because he said he always feels really full when he goes into matches yeah i i think like the pre match meal as you know as a whole should be around three hours Four hours before you know kick off yeah and then you can kind of top up yeah uh, two hours or, or one hour before but like you know the big meal should be at least three hours minimum okay so and it should be like a high in carbohydrates yeah really low in fat yeah moderate in protein so you can add for example like if kick off is at 3 p.m you can add chicken or some eggs if you want that a little bit Yeah. Okay. But try to make it like more carbohydrate based and try of course not to have like a spicy foods, high fat foods and the most important is to find what, you know, makes you feel okay. Yeah. For example, if if you if you come to me and you tell me how should my pre-match meal and I'll tell you, I don't know, my recommendation and you tell me that you feel great doing something different. Yeah, yeah. I would say you keep doing that. Yeah, go with what you think. The most important part is the routine. Uh, of course, if you're doing something crazy, I will tell you not to, but yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Yeah, that's that's kind of like Effie Ambrose. He doesn't, I think he eats at like, if it's a three o'clock kickoff, he'll eat in the morning about half past nine, but then he'll then drink no water past 10 a.m. And that's just the way he likes to feel. He likes to feel light and kind of empty. And then even after the game, he doesn't drink like straight away after, but then he'll start to build up his, his hydration. So like you said, everyone's different really, aren't they? Yeah, and that's that's when, you know, the performance nutritionist will come. And I'll never try to force anything. Um, of course, if I see something that's really, really crazy, I'll try to intervene. Yeah. But for example, like in that case, if a player likes to feel like lighter, Yeah. yeah. I don't want to eat. So I would say, like, try to do, like, a carbo loading the night before, like a really high carbohydrate meal. Yeah. I think he eats at, like, if it's a three o'clock kickoff, he'll eat in the morning about half past nine, but then he'll then drink no water past 10 a.m. And that's just the way he likes to feel. He likes to feel light and kind of empty. And then even after the game, he doesn't drink, like, straight away after, but then he'll start to build up his, his hydration. So like you said, everyone's different really, aren't they? Yeah, and that's that's when, you know, the performance nutritionist will come and I'll never try to force anything. Um, of course, if I see something that's really, really crazy, I'll try to intervene. Yeah. But, for example, like, in that case, if a player likes to feel, like, lighter, 
Yeah. Okay, I don't want to eat. So I would say like try to do like a carbo loading the night before, like a really high carbohydrate meal. Yeah. So meal yeah like have a good breakfast and then just have something to drink like sports drink or a smoothie or whatever or yeah. just have a gel yeah if, if you don't want to eat um but yeah it depends on the area what do you think what are your thoughts on red meat i've seen someone put along the bottom there yeah uh, so i mean it depends on if we're speaking only about nutrition there is no yeah. wrong with red meat uh, there is a lot of misinformation and information take it uh, take take like out of context from you know the scientific papers and all of that um, so if someone wants to eat like red meat that's fine it's high in iron which is really important yeah uh, but I would say not to have it like more than twice uh, per week. That that yeah. is information. If the reasons to avoid red meat are others are like ethical or yeah, yeah. other reasons, that's totally fine. You can be a great athlete without eating red meat. It's not yeah. like you actually need it. But if you like it, it's a good source of some nutrients. So yeah, I know there was a lot of um controversy about you know, the game changers and when yeah. that documentary came out, you know, everyone was talking about and there is nothing wrong with being vegan or vegetarian. That's totally fine. Yeah. But it's not like being vegan or vegetarian will make you a better athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a choice. Yeah. But you can be a great athlete while you're vegetarian. So Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just the way yeah, 'cause we, we saw a few of the boys watch that at Livingston. Um and then suddenly they were vegans. So they yeah. were vegans, in, they watched it the night before, they were vegans in the morning, and one of them, I went upstairs for lunch, and he was actually eating meat, and then the other one lasted until the evening. To be fair, Lyndon Dykes did it for two weeks, but I don't think he scored, and he turned back to meat, and he's been doing okay, so yeah. I think he's back to being a meat eater. I had two or three, they were vegan for three days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, some people, like, for example, you have, what is his name, from Arsenal? Bellerin. Oh, Bellerin, yeah. Yeah, so he he's vegan, but yeah. his reasons for being vegan are totally ethical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's been doing great. But, you know, the thing is, is, like, when a player or whoever goes vegan, let's say you have been having a really bad diet. Yeah. And then you become vegan, you need to stop eating a lot of foods, yeah, and yeah. Start including fruit and vegetable. So yeah. I don't think like it's being vegan what changed is that you start including like high quality foods. So for yeah, example, yeah. I will say to general public to have like a plant based diet. Yeah. But that a plant based diet is just having more fruit and vegetable. So yeah, I would yeah, say seventy yeah. percent of your diet to like from plants and then 30 percent from animal like if we're talking about health yeah 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 um, ethical reasons are something different like yeah that, yeah that's something apart no of course uh, i think that's all the questions i have palace is there anything that you want to add um that you can think of at the moment well i would say that during this time just you know the first thing will be following the hygiene recommendations of like washing your hands and, and all of that. And then from a nutrition perspective, try to include fruit and vegetable in your food. I know it's not that easy. Uh, it sounds easy, but it's not. Yeah. Um, so try to, you know, kind of add smoothies or juices or something like that, that will eat more fruit and vegetable. Uh, because those foods, they have like, a lot, most of them have like vitamin C, most of them have like, you know, something called polyphenols that are really important for immunity. Um, and then I think those are like, you know, the, the, the most important things. And then after that, I would say try to plan your meals with whatever you have. Improve your, you can, it's a moment to improve your food meals. Um, and yeah, well... Try not to lose muscle. Yeah. Lose muscle during this time, so keep your protein intake 
uh, you know, throughout the day, at least every four hours, you should have like a protein source. With protein, I mean like chicken, yeah. milk. Uh, I'm not talking only about supplements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, for older players or from, you know, like uh, uh, players, you know, after 18 years old, they having like a whey protein supplement will be of help. Yeah. Uh, um, and I think that's it. And um, yeah, I mean, there are many things in nutrition. I could be speaking for ages, but yeah. uh, uh, in this scenario, it's just, you know, for, for like kind of forget about boosting immunity. Don't buy any special supplements or whatever you see around, but try yeah. to, you know, keep your hydration on point so your immunity is. I mean, you, you guys want to have your immunity you know, at the top level, not only because of this COVID outbreak, you, you want to have that immunity, you know, in a good place during the whole season. Yeah, of course. You, you lose less days of training. Yeah. And, and you want to, so all these recommendations should go on a day-to-day -day basis as well. Okay, no, perfect. Paula, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. No, thank you so much. I, how is the, do you still uh, drink? Uh, processed juices. Yeah, Deb's put on the bottom, she got fizzy pop on the bottom, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask her to drop it outside my door. No, I'm, I'm more on water now, I listen to you. I've changed it up. So I'm trying yes. to be healthy, I'm trying to keep myself going for another couple of years, so I I'm being healthy now. Well. So you said your, your words weren't wasted. I'm well, there is, there is no more uh, juice after you left. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh. the first thing I said, Marvin left. <laughs> Let's get rid of it. This is gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. No, I hope you keep well. And as I said, thank you again. And no, thank sure, you. If we're locked up for, for, for much longer, I'm sure people have more questions, so we'll get you back on. But thank you so Great. much. That's fine. Thanks. Cheers, Paula. Bye.